Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Back to policy and rights here on Depictions Media Radio. I am your host, Michael Cloggs. As we know, um, that Syria for years, it, it, due to conflict, has been in dire straits. Um, we have seen the ancient city of Damascus get blown apart as conflict continued. We watched the Syrian people uh, flee towards Turkey and other countries to find relief relief from the fighting and the destruction due to conflict. And those refugees are in dire need of aid, food, and other medical supplies in order just to simply sustain life. And this is the, the, the topic of the next, the next segment from the UN Security Council. Ultimately, the right to food and medical supplies is what is actually in the balance. And rather you side with Russia with what they they think is is right with with a six months extension to a cross border um, aid renewal, or rather you decide to go with Norway and Ireland. The bottom line is that there are lives in the balance, and the the people who are sitting there need the help. Okay, so. Russia, in during the UN Security Council, voted a vetoed a resolution that would renew the cross uh, border crossing for aid workers from into into Turkey um, for one year. They proposed a six month renewal on it. The reasoning is, is uh, which you'll hear from the permanent representative of, of Russia. He will t- tell you that that they want they want more review, more review of the effectiveness of what is going on with it, more review of what's actually happening. The. Ireland and Norway say that renewing it for only six months cuts off supply chains and makes things unstable. The two sides are I, are going to have to go back and refigure something that is actually going to bring aid to the people who actually need it. You will hear statements from the United States about the the people and their ac- and their need for aid, and you will hear other countries make similar statements about just simply the need for aid. So, let's listen to what what uh, what happened to on the UN Security Council floor, and then you will hear a statement from the permanent representative from Russia to the UN Security Council. 
At the outset of the meeting, I should like, on behalf of the Security Council, to express our sadness and shock at the senseless assassination of former President of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe of Japan. Our sadness also extends to the passing of former President of Angola, José Eduardo dos Santos. The members of the Security Council express their condolences and deepest sympathy to Mr. Abe's and Mr. Santos' family and to the government and people of Japan and of Angola on these tragic losses. I would like now to ask all present to stand and observe a minute of silence in the memory of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and President José Eduardo dos Santos. The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in the Middle East. The agenda is adopted. In accordance with Rule 37 of the Council's Provisional Rules of Procedure, I invite the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic to participate in this meeting. It is so decided. The Security Council will now begin its consideration of item two of the agenda. Members of the Council have before them documents S-2022-538 and S-2022-541, each of which contains the text of a separate draft resolution. I now give the floor to the, those members of the Council who wish to make statements before the vote. I give the floor to the representative of Norway. Thank you, President. As pen holders, Ireland and Norway have engaged carefully and consistently with all Council members throughout this negotiation. The result of our effort is the amended draft resolution which you now have before you. Throughout, we have been guided solely by the humanitarian needs of the Syrian people. We started with 12 months in our first draft in blue. The vast majority of the council members support such a 12 month extension. Our amended text, which we are voting on now, has a six plus six month extension. This is our effort to reach a compromise. This resolution would renew the border crossing of Baba Lava. The resolution ensures that humanitarian assistance reaches all those in need, facilitates further early recovery, and encourages regular follow-up meetings on the implementation. We believe this resolution is a fair compromise. It represents the balance between the different positions of council members. We are grateful to all council members for their constructive engagement to this end. We now commend the draft resolution to this council and we ask all members to support it. Thank you. I thank the representative of Norway for her statement. 
I now give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. And let me also start by adding my condolences to those uh, who have also expressed them to the uh, Prime Minister of Japan and um, the former Prime Minister of Japan and uh, former President of Angola. Uh, let me also thank the pen holders, uh, our colleagues, Norway and Ireland, uh, on uh, the issue at hand for us today. Uh, their leadership in drafting uh, the my, uh, resolution uh, was very much appreciated. And that is what we are voting on today, a compromise. The United States and many others wanted a more expansive resolution that would open more border crossings. That is required to actually meet the dire needs of the Syrian people whose conditions are worse than at any point since the war started. And we will need to do much more work to help the Syrian people after today. We've had a consistent position on this over the years. Needs on the ground must drive humanitarian decisions, not politics. But we're not letting perfect be the enemy of the good. We want to build on last year's council, last year's council unity, and so we will vote in favor of the resolution today. But before we do, I want to explain the three main reasons we are strongly supporting the resolution and why we urge every member of this council to do the same. First, the UN cross-border mechanism provides unparalleled transparency and stability. It ensures that aid that goes into northwest Syria is properly inspected, reviewed, and tracked. And it gives NGOs the critical 12-month timeline they need to plan ahead and coordinate the incoming resources. Any renewal less than 12 months would disrupt supply chains, resulting in less aid for the larger number of people who require it. I visited the Bab al Hawa crossing and transshipment hub last month, where boxes are verified and sealed. And I can tell you that this is one of the most closely monitored and well-organized crossings in the world. I saw firsthand what is going across the border. I saw the medicine, the food, diapers, and blankets. If we do not renew this border crossing, we will have no UN verification system in place and no regular timeline. Whatever emerges to take its place will provide less humanitarian assistance and lack any collective oversight or reliability, and that is a bad outcome for all of us. Second, we have all made progress on everything we promised when we unanimously passed the resolution last year. Un the United States in particular has demonstrated our sincere commitment to delivering on issues that are important to members of the council. A vote against the resolution is in fact a vote against cross-line aid, a component of this resolution that while insufficient on its own, the United States continues to support and hopes will continue to expand. A vote against this resolution is a vote against early recovery efforts, which we know is an important component of a sustainable humanitarian response. A vote against this resolution is a vote against transparency undertaken, undertaken by the UN monitoring mission. And a vote against this resolution is a death sentence. Bob El Hawa is the single most effective way we can get life or death assistance into Northwest Syria. Medicines, vaccines, food, water, educational supplies, and so much more. We cannot shut all this assistance off at a time when prices for basic food, like gas, basic goods like food and gas are spiking. We cannot cause a self-inflicted catastrophe at a moment when a humanitarian crisis is pushing more and more Syrians to the brink. 
which leads me to our third and final reason for supporting this resolution. And it's a simple one. 4.1 million people are counting on us. That's how many people in Northwest Syria need humanitarian assistance that we must all vote to renew in just a few moments. There are 15 of us on the Security Council. That means that every single one of us holds the fate of roughly 270,000 people in our hands. So when you take this vote, think of the 270,000 people you personally are responsible for. Think of the young boy who is wondering whether he will be able to continue his education, let alone survive the harsh winter to come. Think of the pregnant woman who won't be able to, to deliver her baby safely if her hospital does not have the supplies she needs. Think of the family who will feel hunger in the pit of their stomachs, unbearable hunger that no one should ever have to experience if we do not renew this resolution. Colleagues, failure is not an option today. We must get this done. We must move politics to the side and put the needs of the Syrian people first. And I urge you to vote yes on this resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for her statement. And I'll give the floor to the representative of Kenya. Mr. President, thank you for giving me the floor. I am making this explanation of vote before the vote on behalf of the E10 in Kenya's capacity as coordinator for the month of July. The E10 has been in consultation this morning. We have appreciated the extensive efforts by the core penholders to achieve a compromise text that accommodates the legitimate concerns of all delegations while meeting the dire and urgent needs of the Syrian people. The E10 are all in favor of a 12-month renewal of the cross-border humanitarian aid mechanism based on the core penholders text. This would allow humanitarian actors on the ground to operate effectively. As a coordinator of the E10, Kenya also consulted with the UAE as an Arab representative on the council, and the UAE made clear that the Arab countries want a renewal of the mechanism to provide urgent relief to the millions of Syrians in need. The E10's pressing interest has been for a United Security Council on behalf of the Syrian people. Despite the imminent outcome of voting on two resolutions, we continue to make every effort to unite the Council. Thank you. I thank the representative of Kenya. The Council is ready to proceed to the vote to vote on the draft resolution before it. I shall per first put to the vote the draft resolution contained in document S slash 2022 slash 538 submitted by Ireland and Norway. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S 2022 please raise their hand. Those against? Abstentions? The draft resolution has not been adopted owing to the negative vote of a permanent member of the Council. The result of the voting is as follows. 13 votes in favor, one vote against, and one abstention. As I said, the, the, the draft of the resolution has not been adopted owing to the negative vote of a permanent member. I now give the floor to those members of the council who wish to make statements after the vote. I give the floor to the representative of Ireland. Thank you, President. Ireland and Norway are extremely disappointed that the Council has not adopted the draft resolution we've just voted on on cross-border 
humanitarian aid into Syria. Having engaged carefully with all Council members, we put forward this resolution in good faith and as our best effort toward a compromise which could command the support of this Council. The text would have made it possible for life-saving humanitarian assistance to reach those in need in northwest Syria by all modalities, cross-border and cross-line. It would have facilitated continued and enhanced early recovery efforts. It would have renewed the cross-border mechanism for 12 months unless the Council decided otherwise after six months. The cross-border operation is a lifeline for millions of Syrians who are dependent on humanitarian aid. The humanitarian situation is not getting any better. On the contrary, it has only worsened over the last year. People lack food and food prices are rising. On this, we think every member of the Council can agree. We appreciate the engagement from all sides during the negotiations. We appreciate also the support which our text received from the large majority of Council members. However, we deeply regret that this compromise was rejected through the use of a veto. Ireland and Norway's views on the veto are well known. We regret its existence and we deeply regret its use today. But we are not daunted by this veto. This is not the end of the road. What matters to us as penholders is getting the humanitarian aid to those who need it. This Council has a responsibility here, and we will continue to engage all Council members to seek to ensure that the Council lives up to that responsibility. We need to reach a solution in the immediate term, a solution which renews the mandate for cross-border aid. There is simply no time to waste. The Syrian people are counting on us. Thank you, President. I thank the representative of Ireland for her statement. I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Colleagues, this is a dark, dark day in the Security Council. When we sit in this ornate chamber, it's easy to lose sight of the real-life consequences of our votes. But roughly 5,000 miles away for 4.1 million people in northwest Syria, the impact of this vote will be swift and dire. Due to the vote of one council member, hospitals will have to turn patients away because they will not have the necessary supplies and medicine. Schools will likely have to close their doors, denying children the promise of an education, of a brighter future. Nutrition assistance that 85,000 people rely on to survive will be cut off, as will life-saving dignity kits for 250,000 women and girls. And shipments of vital therapeutics like Plumpy Nut will stop. Hopes will be dashed. This is not a moment to mince words. I have long said that this is a life and death issue and tragically, people will die because of this vote and the country who shamelessly deployed the veto today. Getting this done was the bare minimum. This resolution was already an extreme compromise. It is unfathomable that one Security Council member, Russia, put their own political interests above the humanitarian needs of the Syrian people. This was a moment to save lives and lead responsibly. One country failed to do that. UN reports and NGOs on the ground have told us clearly that the UN cross-border mechanism was the single most effective way to get aid into the country. Twice now I've seen the efficacy of the cross-border mechanism with my own eyes. Colleagues, we failed today but I refuse to let this be the end of the story. Because of today's vote, the Syrian people are at risk of receiving less aid, resulting in yet more suffering, and there will be less of the transparency that one council member claims to want. 
that will be solely the fault of that veto today. It is in no one's interest, including Russia, to have Resolution 2585 expire. So the United States stands ready to continue talks on this issue until we find a way to extend the cross-border mandate. When I visited the region last month, I saw the desperation in the eyes of countless Syrians. And I promised the aid workers and refugees I met with that I would convey their desperation and that I would do everything in my power to renew this resolution and get them the aid that they need. I will honor my promise. I will keep at this. And I pray everyone here will do the same. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States. And I give the floor to the representative of Russia. Спасибо, господин председатель. Наша делегация проголосовала против проекта резолюции о продлении трансграничного механизма в Сирии на один год. Сожалеем, что упорство делегаций Ирландии и Норвегии, неформальных кураторов сирийского гуманитарного досье в Совете Безопасности ООН, не нашло лучшего применения. Наша позиция в связи с предложениями о годовом продлении трансграничного механизма содействия Сирии была известна всем с самого начала. На этот счет мы не вводили никого в заблуждение, параллельно проявляя гибкость по другим аспектам. Однако дипломатического искусства, да и вообще желания о чем-то договариваться, нашим норвежским, ирландским и в целом западным коллегам сегодня явно не хватило. Выставленный на голосование документ в первую очередь игнорировал интересы Дамаска, который как раз и должен быть основным бенефициаром резолюции. В проекте игнорировалось, что за прошедший год, по нашим оценкам, Совет Безопасности и ООН в целом оказались не в состоянии выполнить те задачи, над решением которых мы единогласно согласились работать. Это касается налаживания поставок по внутрисирийским маршрутам на северо-запад страны, повышения прозрачности в отчетности по проектной деятельности ООН в Сирии, существенного наращивания донорской помощи на проекты в области раннего восстановления. Мы попытались исправить эти недостатки и недоработки в нашем проекте, по которому вам, коллеги, сейчас предстоит проголосовать. Он позволяет продлить ТГМ на полгода, а затем еще на полгода, после того, как нужные параметры работы, о которых мы договаривались еще в прошлом году, будут, наконец, достигнуты. Хочу отметить, что особенно лукаво, изощренно и цинично выглядит выступление моей американской коллеги. Из него может сложиться ощущение, что российский проект вообще не предусматривает продление трансграничного механизма. Однако все, что американский постпред перечислила в своем выступлении, в нашем проекте есть. Каждый может в этом убедиться сам. Видим в ваших словах вопиющее проявление политического цинизма, и попытку ввести в заблуждение мировое общественное мнение. Коллеги, нам предстоит еще одно голосование. Надеюсь, что вы поддержите наш проект, потому что альтернатива этому – окончательное и бесповоротное закрытие ТГМ. Призываем вас поддержать наш документ. Если, конечно, вам важна судьба ТГМ – а не сомнительные геополитические игры. Спасибо. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation. I give the floor to the representative of the United Kingdom. Thank you, President. And I'd like to start by expressing the UK's deep condolences uh, following the deaths of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and former President Jose Eduardo dos Santos. Moving to today's topic, 
I'd like to start by thanking Ireland and Norway for their sterling efforts and masterful diplomacy as penholders to find a reasonable compromise on this text. It is deeply regrettable that Russia has yet again vetoed a humanitarian resolution on Syria. This is a deeply irresponsible veto that will have a tragic impact. The UN and humanitarian organisations have repeatedly described a 12-month renewal as essential, not least to provide operational hope for the 4.1 million Syrians who desperately rely on the support provided by the cross-border mechanism. The penholders consulted council members extensively and their balanced text also provides, provided important support for early recovery, resilience and livelihoods planning reflected in the widespread support it, widespread support it received. A renewal for six months will create significant operational challenges for frontline NGOs to their planning, their procurement, their hiring of staff and ultimately their sustainability. We will not support the resolution tabled by the Russian Federation, which simply serves to slice in half the fragile certainty we are giving to humanitarian operations and to bolster the Assad regime. We do need to find a way forward to preserve this vital humanitarian lifeline and the penholders have our full support as they seek to do that. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom. I give the floor to the representative of Mexico. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Lamentamos que el Consejo de Seguridad no haya podido adoptar hoy una resolución para renovar el mecanismo transfronterizo de asistencia humanitaria en Siria, el cual es simplemente crucial para la vida de millones de personas atrapadas en el conflicto a causa del veto de un miembro permanente. Reiteramos que la asistencia humanitaria no puede ni debe ser rehén de consideraciones políticas. Por ello, resulta más grave aún que una resolución estrictamente humanitaria que busca dar certidumbre a la planeación y ejecución de planes de asistencia por parte de los diversos actores operando en Siria y que cuenta con el apoyo necesario de la membresía del Consejo, sea bloqueada por razones políticas. Esto solo tiene repercusiones negativas sobre la población siria que sigue padeciendo los tremendos efectos de 11 años de guerra. Esperamos que el Consejo pueda renovar este mandato con la urgencia necesaria para atender las necesidades humanitarias en Siria, asumiendo así la responsabilidad que le confiere la Carta de las Naciones Unidas. Mientras tanto, es el turno ahora de la Asamblea General de debatir sobre el veto emitido de conformidad con la resolución 76-262, para lo cual solicitamos el apoyo de la Presidencia en la elaboración del informe especial correspondiente. Muchas gracias. I thank the representative of Mexico for her statement. I now give the floor to the representative of China. No, no, after the next one. After the next vote. I'm sorry, your name was on the list. I now give the floor to the representative of Albania. Thank you, Mr. President. We also thank the penholders, Norway and Ireland, for the intense work done, and Albania supported 12 months renewal, which is a must for us, and also among other things, to plan the resources. But the vote today is a sad day for the Council and the UN as all. Well. We have failed to find agreement on a basic matter such as humanitarian aid, which should not even be a point of discussion. 
It is a tragic day for over 4 million Syrians who have lost access to life-saving aid. Over 1 million children will be exposed to hunger. We have let the Syrian people down again. We witnessed again the devastating effects of arbitrary use of veto by a permanent member. This is not the way forward. We want a united council, also on behalf of the Syrian people, and we should make all efforts to achieve this. Millions of people depend on it. What is the purpose of this council if it cannot come to rescue million, millions of Syrians in dire need for help? Until we find a political solution, we have to deliver humanitarian aid. We will support the efforts of pen holders to find a solution, and we must go back to consultations with renewed resolve to find a solution as soon as possible. And I thank you. I thank the representative of Albania for his statement. I now uh, shall put to the vote the draft resolution contained in document S slash 2022 slash 541 submitted by the Russian Federation. I now give the floor to those members of the council who wish to make statements before the vote. Um, I give the floor to the representative of the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. The United States will vote against this resolution because by only renewing the cross-border mechanism for six months, the Russian resolution fails to give aid workers the assurances needed to sufficiently meet needs on the ground, resulting in needless suffering. And let me be clear, this is a resolution for only six months. It is a res resolution that benefits the Syrian regime more than it benefits the people of Syria. When I went to the region, aid workers specifically cautioned me that only renewing the mechanism for six months would be a disaster for their supply lines. They would not be able to arrange steady supplies of life-saving goods at a volume necessary to reach all the people who currently depend on cross-border operations. On top of that, this six-month timeline would mean life-saving assistance would shut off in the dead of winter when needs are at their highest, which would be a nightmare scenario for a region where millions of people are still displaced. Last year, this council, including Russia, voted to support cross-border aid for a year, specifically a six-month authorization followed by a six-month extension subject to the issuance of the Secretary General's report. The humanitarian needs have only increased since then. Russia's resolution was also problematic given the process. As presented, it circumvented the normal negotiation process that allows the full council to weigh in and it completely disregarded the draft that the pen holders put forward in good faith, a draft that sought to address the concerns the Russians claim to have about the mandate. Colleagues, this resolution put before us by Russia simply does not do right by the Syrian people. It does not do right by aid organizations, and it is not the right way to conduct business in this council. Russia has greedily and disrespectfully hijacked these negotiations from the pen holders who have led a consultative and inclusive process. For these reasons, we cannot support this resolution, and we call on others to join us in voting no. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the United States for her statement. The Council is now ready to proceed to the vote on the second draft resolution before it. Will those in favor of the draft resolution contained in document S slash 2022 slash 541 please raise their hand.
those against those abstaining The result of the following of the voting is as follows. Two votes in favor, three votes against, ten abstentions. The draft resolution has not been adopted, having failed to obtain the required number of votes. I now give the floor to those members of the Council who wish to make statements after the vote. I I give the floor to the representative of Ireland who has requested to take the floor. They have requested, I know they will want to make it's not right. No, but it's not after this is not this Yeah, but it's not. If 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 not the explanation of votes, then I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Спасибо, господин председатель. Не буду говорить долго. Сегодняшнее голосование красноречивее любых слов, особенно тех лукавых и пустых слов, которых мы услышали от наших западных коллег. Те, кто не поддержал наш проект, продемонстрировали свое реальное отношение к нуждам и чаяниям простых сирийцев. У вас в руках был вариант продлить трансграничный механизм гумпомощи Сирии на один год в два этапа при условии улучшения механизма гумпомощи этой стране в целом. На словах вы всегда выступали за его совершенствование. На деле же оказалось, что все это фальш и лукавство. И сегодня вы это доказали, похоронив трансграничный механизм окончательно. Не думаю, что кто-то в Сирии от этого пострадает, что бы вы там ни говорили. А возможности снабжать окопавшихся в Идлибе террористов у вас и так есть. Там и господа... У вас был выбор, вы его сделали. И теперь эта страница истории перевернута окончательно и бесповоротно. Со своей стороны будем и дальше оказывать помощь братскому сирийскому народу при безусловном уважении суверенитета и территориальной целостности этой страны. Благодарю за внимание. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation. And now I give the floor to the representative of Norway. Thank you, President. Ireland and Norway, as co-pen holders of the Syrian humanitarian file, abstain on this draft resolution presented by Russia. We believe it's essential to renew the mandate for cross-border aid. The Irish-Norwegian draft resolution which we consider a fair and careful compromise between the views expressed during these negotiations, was unfortunately vetoed. Our draft resolution included, included a 6 plus 6 extension of the mandate. This is a practical issue, not a political one. For the humanitarian organization operate, operating on the ground, a predictable mandate is necessary to be able to plan and implement the humanitarian response. It is critical for cross-border and cross-line operations and for implementation of early recovery projects. The draft resolution 
put forward by Russia amounts to a six-month extension. This is simply not enough in our view. That is why Ireland and Norway chose to abstain. The Council has a responsibility here to secure continued humanitarian aid to northwest Syria. Ireland and Norway will now continue to engage all Council members to seek to ensure that the Council live up to that responsibility. That means we need to reach a solution in the immediate term. There is simply no time to waste. The Syrian people are counting on us. It is essential that those who depend on humanitarian aid can continue to receive the support they need. Thank you. I know you are, I know you are impatient, and that's why I decided to step in before the consultations that we will have to answer your questions and to explain better our position. Yes, I know, I know you have a question. <laughs> Thanks, Ambassador Michelle, yeah. for Reuters. Uh, you said in the, the page has been turned. Is that it? Is Russia done with this? Are you going to engage in any further negotiations? Let me remind you of how it all developed. So a year ago, uh, we all agreed the basis of our understanding was our uh, common position with the United States that humanitarian efforts in Syria needed improvement. And we agreed on the text of 2585, which uh, was uh, composed in the way that uh, we were all waiting for the uh, report of Secretary General in the midterm after six months. So the formula was uh, expired, uh, it will be extended subject to substantive report of Secretary General. I may be mistaken in the words, but something like this. When it came to the moment when it was about to be prolonged, uh, we said, uh, guys, we had some kind of homework which we agreed to do. You failed to do this homework. Uh, but we, we heard uh, things that were absolutely opposite uh, and breaking the trust that emerged at the beginning of these consultations. And they were said publicly. They, they sounded like uh, whatever Russia w would like to do, uh, the resolution will be automatically extended for six more months. Uh, so it was a breach of trust, under, undermining of a trust, uh, for sure. So this year, we tried to learn this lesson, and we said, uh, okay, let's extend it, uh, let, let's put the formula that it is for six months, and then the council uh, formulate that there is a desire to extend it further uh, with the help of a resolution. So with a view to further extension. This is the phrase in our draft. What our American and uh, British and other colleagues are now trying to imply is that six equals to zero and that there is no will in, in this draft that we proposed to extend this resolution further. This is, this is totally a fail. I told you sev several times that my uh, arithmetic is not very bad, it's very good. So I think that six doesn't equal to zero. So we tried to learn this lesson right now, and we said that we uh, uh, propose a text of the resolution where we would take account of uh, everything that was done wrong for the first time, where we would reconfirm the commitment that we did one year ago, and we will have a good text, and then we all, in good faith, commit, in, uh, commit for extending this resolution and making our homework. What, now, what our Western colleagues are now trying to say is that we are not committed to doing our homework even after the six months. And this is very bad. That's why uh, the uh, picture that our uh, Western colleagues try to present, that Russia is against uh, cross-border mechanism and Russia is against extending this cross-border mecha mechanism, is totally uh, uh, false. A lot of your colleagues said that they would like to try and continue negotiations to see if a agreement can be reached before the deadline on Sunday, will Russia continue with negotiations and are you still open to some if kind someone, of compromise? If someone uh, uh, proposes our draft, uh, we would not uh, say that this is our intellectual property. If someone proposes our draft for the second time, why not? If not, if not, I'm, I, I think that the, the page is over. So the UAE and Brazil both suggested nine months? Is that a starter? No. So 
what about a six-month technical rollover? It's not a technical rollover for six months. It's a substantial rollover. And again, I told you that the uh, starting point for our efforts was to improve the things that we have agreed, for, uh, agreed uh, about one year ago. This is our common commitment. We thought it was our uh, common homework that we need to do. And our desire was to recommit to this homework. But our Western colleagues, uh, by speaking in the way they spoke in the Council, clearly see that they don't, don't care about these commitments, they don't clear, care about this homework, and of course it uh, puts in danger the whole situation. So just to clarify, if any other draft is put to a vote that is not your draft, you'll veto it? Obviously. So the, U, the US ambassador accused Russia of uh, this veto will kill people, people will die in Syria. What's your response to that? Once she rejected uh, our draft, uh, that's her responsibility, not ours. We proposed a solution which, which implied uh, six months plus the desire of the council to extend it for the further six months. Again, six doesn't equal to zero in my view. She says it equals to zero. So is the UN cross-border aid operation from Turkey into Syria dead? We have several days. I, I told you that we do not uh, care if somebody will take our draft and reintroduce it. Uh, we, we may be committed to it, uh, but I don't see at this point uh, any, or any other option. Even given the fact of the words that have been said today, I think this uh, has been made uh, almost impossible. Sounds like you're not even open to further negotiations on anything. We are. You are? We are open to negotiations, but negotiations and solution is a different thing. I think uh, they have a solution in hand, uh, and uh, they know what to do. They know where, how to call us. We are always available. I think you monopolize a little bit. I know, I know. Maybe Sorry, somebody else, else wants to like ask. would like to ask a question. That's fine. Um, <laughs> how... Uh, have, have the... the Russia has been internationally isolated over Ukraine here at the UN. Sorry, this is wrong. Sorry? This is wrong. We are not uh, internationally isolated over Ukraine. And uh, if the we speak... The GA votes, though, would show international isolation? The last uh, GA vote was uh, for uh, members membership of ECOSOC, and 118 countries supported our candidacy. I'm talking about the GA resolutions in March that denounced Russia can, for invading Ukraine. You can speak about the GA resolution of uh, 1948 or 50, I don't know. We're not speaking about history, we're speaking about the current state. But I, I suggest I need to return to the consultations. If, if there are no more questions on cross-border, then maybe that's it. Yeah. Are, uh, regarding the, based on the General Assembly uh, resolution, that you are so you need to give explanation for the general assembly uh, because you are using uh, you are the first one that you are using the veto but we will do it with pleasure because we will expose the hypocrisy and double standards of our western colleagues they had at, my, at hand the solution to this but they rejected it and they now try to blame russia as the brazilian president said that uh, we had 99 percent uh, agreement on this but they didn't want to ac acknowledge the fact that we had to do our common homework which we agreed a year ago we can't accept the fact that they undermine this trust it's absolutely unacceptable for russia so I'm, i would be very much ready to repeat it in general assembly a solid explanation for the general assembly i voiced it to you <laughs> One more question. Are you disappointed that China did not vote no with you on the first resolution? Uh, China is a sovereign state. Uh, they have their own interests. Uh, we are allies, we are partners, we respect each other. But it doesn't mean uh, that we always uh, see uh, things eye to eye on every issue. Okay? Thank you very much.
This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.